Hello guys, today's video is going to be something very different and maybe not everyone is going to agree with me. Serial Survival has been creating so many features. You have something like Hero Appointment, you have Chief Gear, Hero Gear, you have the plane, helicopter, so many things the game has been adding. You will end up finding yourself unable to keep up or you just don't know what to spend on anymore. The purpose of this video is to give you guidance on what to spend your money on first. Let's begin with number one. The first thing you should spend your money on is undoubtedly the aircraft. Now, why should you spend on aircraft? The plane can give you a max of 135.3% of buffs for each. Well, honestly, I've stopped spending on this game, as honestly, everyone should. My state has both helicopter and the plane. You're wondering why I'm still on level 2 plane? Well, I'm not spending anymore. Maxing the helicopter can give you up to 200.5% on stats. And that's 200.5% for every troop tile, either health or lethality, which are the most important stats in this game. And once all these are level 100, you'll unlock something called the Stealth Module. Now, once you do that, I still recommend you go to level 120 instead of the Stealth Module. Once you have all level 120, you can consider doing Stealth Module. Obviously, you want to focus first on Infantry Health and Hunter Lethality. That one is Hunter Lethality. Maxing the helicopter can give you up to 200.5% on stats. Number two is heroes. Obviously, having max heroes as a rally leader is the most important thing that can make you as a weaker rally leader outperform a stronger rally leader with older heroes. And I've seen that on my state. Being behind by one hero generation makes a whole lot of difference. So obviously, heroes are going to rank number two in this list. But they are not always the most economic thing to do. So if you want to do something really smart, I'd ignore a generation or two, especially the bad ones like 9, possibly 11. I'm not sure if 11 is improved now. They did some changes. So skipping a generation and focusing on something else like helicopter or, I don't know, flag bearer can be worth it in the long run, especially if you're not planning on quitting yet. Before I tell you what's next, let me talk to you about a potential way where you can reduce your spending by using the sponsor of this video, App Gallery. Well, honestly, App Gallery fits with this video because they can make your purchases so much cheaper, especially if you decide to start a newer account. It's currently not possible to migrate an old account to a newer account, but with App Gallery offering so much with these campaigns such as this one, Weekend, App Gallery, and PaySafe cards. You can get up to 20% back for respending in game by just spending specific amounts when you join AppGary Poland. Then there's Summer with AppGary for strategic games where you can just get free coupons and add them depending on how much you spend in the game. This is a small example so you understand the currency. You can also message me for secret cashbacks that only I have access to. Let's get back to the video. Number three on the list is hero gear, then badges number four. I'm putting these together because I assume most people have hero gear maxed by now. Obviously hero gear buffs your health and vitality which are more important than attack defense obviously. I think those max is easier to do but if you're on a newer state you might wanna give these a little focus especially for infantry and hunter first. Then back to badges. You can do something like me depending on how much of a budget are you. I have all my infantry maxed, then I'm pushing my hunter, then my rider last. Badges buff also health and lethality. Hero appointment. Hero appointment is still new in this game and you obviously heard so many people talk about flag bearer. Let me explain why flag bearer is so overpowered. You really want to unlock these bonuses, especially the third one. Flag bearer buffs your rally hunter damage, not attack. It buffs your damage. When you buff your damage, you're buffing your lethality and so many other things with it. Let me give you a small example. Let's assume you have 1000 lethality and 1000% attack. With this buff unlocked, your 1000% kinda becomes 1135%. And honestly, it's very easy to get. 
Maxing flag bearer is the ultimate priority for a rally leader, and the rest compared to flag bearer is not very important. So I wouldn't put money there once you have flag bearer, and I'd move on to this next feature, which is the polymer research. Now, after asking multiple people, I had lots of difference in opinion. Polymer research is actually maybe not bad, but the main thing you really want to focus at is this one. Your rally capacity. This one or this one. Increasing your rally capacity is difficult and expensive, but it's a worthy upgrade. It can boost your rally up to 10%. Polymer research can increase your lethality and health by 50% and for attack and defense 65%. That's for Plasma 8 Polymer research by the way. If you compare this to the 200% lethality and health you get from helicopter, like a friend of mine said, this is peanuts. So even the plane is much more worth it than polymer research, if you think about it. And even in hero appointment you can get that for much less. Next on the list, which I don't really expect most people have that problem anymore, is generic research. From generic research, you can get a lot of things such as March Cap to Lethality and Infantry Health, but I expect most people to have finished this by now. If you're on a newer state, I have a different guide for you coming up soon. Next comes Chief Gear. Chief Gear is kinda at the bottom of the list here because it just buffs your attack and defense. I'm not saying Chief Gear is bad, but they are not as good as the other ones. And later on, they just become obsolete. Next comes the frames. The frames are honestly very easy to obtain just by spending $5. And they are worthy upgrade because if you don't know where your frames go, you can see your frame stats going right here in either troop attack or troop defense. Some people have over 300%, 350%, I guess, but some have almost 160, 150. So that can make a small difference. Keep in mind, I did not say HQ skins. Yet. Next is your own plasma level. Well, obviously, the higher the plasma level of your troops, the more damage you're gonna do. But honestly, for example, on Reservoir Raid or Reservoir Leak, it doesn't make this much of a difference if you're using Plasma 8 or Plasma 10. Don't get me wrong, Plasma 10 is still very strong, but it's honestly lower on the priority. And I'm making that mistake myself. You can see that I'm trying to push for Plasma 10, even though I haven't even finished my rally capacity but now I'm just too far to stop once you have plasma 10 you can maybe go for plasma 10 infantry but I'd honestly go for research first next is HQ skins the thing with HQ skins is a low spending rally leader may end up with something like 150 to 100 generic troop attack a high spending one will end up with 300 to 350 percent which is a noticeable difference but a terribly expensive one. Is it worth it? It's up to you, but I wouldn't really put all my budget on HQ skins. Finally on the list is the statues. Statues do offer nice stats, but for the price, I put them last. No questions asked. Thank you for watching this video, guys. It's been a very long video. It's first time I go this deep on such topics. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if I made a mistake somewhere. So I'm happy to hear your comments. And please hit this like button. See you in the next one.